I got 10 years to fill a stadium, but only two minutes to fill your cranium. Humble the poet, signing in. After a world tour and a few other trips, I was unable to avoid all the weddings that I got invited to. The weddings can be fun. Probably. I, I, I wouldn't know, actually. But I do have a beef with getting married. To me, marriage is like a VCR. That shit made sense once upon a time. But not so much anymore. Please note, I'm not dissing long, meaningful, monogamous relationships. Those are cute. I'm talking about the act of getting the government involved into your relationship by signing licenses, having big ceremonies, and all that jazz. The point of this video isn't to talk you out of getting married but instead to help people who already weren't excited about the idea but figured they had to do it because it's the thing to do. So here are a few reasons why marriage is overrated. One, it's expensive as shit. According to CNBC, the average wedding in America costs $30,000. I'm Punjabi. I couldn't even get my big toe married for $30,000. I could go gay, marry a dude who already has kids of a different race, thus getting disowned by my family and reducing my overall guest list and use a coupon. And I still couldn't get married for only $30,000. One of the last Punjabi weddings I went to was so elaborate that my friend next to me was like, this is way too expensive. Nobody should be spending more than $70,000 on their wedding. 70? thousand dollars is it till death do us part or till debt do us part hey i love you so much let's spend the rest of our lives paying off our wedding and yeah i know one of the main causes of divorce is money but we'll be the exception to the rule and to be honest what the hell are you celebrating marriage is an institution that you enter do you throw a big elaborate party when you enter high school or when you enter university no you celebrate when you graduate or at least have something to show for it shouldn't your 10 year anniversary be a bigger deal than your wedding at least y'all survived together for a decade hell if a couple survives even one year they deserve a bigger party than a wedding the logic is twisted to me but i mean if some of y'all got it like that guac on your rice bowls and everything but i'm not gonna be mad at you for having money and i'm not gonna be mad at you for spending it but that still doesn't mean the numbers are in your favor number two divorce rates so the top three countries that are watching this video right now are the u.s UK and Canada. Depending on what you research, the US divorce rate right now is between 40 and 50%. Canada is 41%. UK is 47%. It's almost a coin toss. Will our marriage last 20 years? No. That's a cool ass Australian monies. Would you board a plane if you only had a 41% chance of surviving? <laughs> Not to mention that plane ticket is going to be $30,000 if you're white. Triple that if you're colored. And also keep in mind that these stats represent people who actually got divorced. It doesn't talk about the people who are too scared to pull the plug. Again, at this point, I have to remind you that I'm not here to diss people who are getting married. Nor am I trying to talk you out of doing so. My issue is with the act of marriage itself. Your prerogative is your prerogative. If I say I don't like avocados or jalapenos, jalapenos, that doesn't mean I hate everybody who eats them. So if your butthurt meter is tingling right now, you might be sitting on your phone. Number three marriage and love the ideas are still evolving the idea of marrying somebody for personal reasons like love is relatively new it's a phenomenon that got popular in the 14th century that's about 700 years in 5,000 years of recorded human history for that marriage was commonly seen as a simple transaction to consolidate wealth land and power like when the starks and the lannisters got married and yeah that was a dumb idea but that doesn't take away from the fact that that how things went and in many cases that's how it still goes and now if you think about it taking practical things into consideration like do they have money to support does their family have a history of any medical issues will our kids be good looking these ideas are all taboo to discuss now even though they sort of kind of matter as my mom always says love you don't pay the bills See mom, you're famous. We all want companionship. And what better way to get companionship than to convince people to sign a piece of paper saying that if they leave you, you get half their shit. Take a second and look at the history of marriage. Look why it was invented, how it was invented, and historically what it was used to do. Definitely is not as romantic as you think. Let's create relationships on common priorities. Instead of simply saying, I like looking at your face, so let's spend the rest of our lives together. Creating a relationship that is both lovely for personal reasons and practical it's probably the best choice. Like Jay-Z and Beyonce. Again, I'm not here to diss healthy relationships. I'm just here to diss the four laps and the I do's and I do's. 
and I get it, especially as a child of an immigrant. Sometimes the only socially acceptable way to get out of your house is to get married. Sometimes the only socially acceptable way to have a child is to have it within wedlock. But socially acceptable doesn't mean it's always gonna make you happy. And I'm definitely not the only person thinking about this. The good news is the divorce rates are going down. Not because marriage is awesome, but because less people are getting married. And the ones who are getting married are waiting longer to do it. People can't even stick with their cell phone for more than a couple of years. For our generation, if something is broken, we just replace it. Unlike the previous generations who would try to repair it. That includes relationships. And you can be sad about that reality, or you can respect it. Again, I'm not trying to talk you out of getting married, unless you're trying to invite me to your wedding. And in that case, yeah, I might have to break up your marriage so I don't have to attend. I'm just saying if you didn't want to in the first place, you can always change your mind later. And if you really, really, really want to get married, chill for a bit, wait some time, and then do it if you still want to. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. As always, if you do like what I say or the way I think, check out my books on Learn. Get yourself a copy at unlearn101.com or Barnes & Noble, or Amazon, or anywhere else that sells books online. If you can't pay for shipping, or you want it right, 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 right now, or you don't want to read, you can get my audiobook at unlearn101.com, where I read it to you in my sexy, mumbly voice. I'm also commenting on all comments left on this video in the first hour. So, leave a comment, and I will try my best to reply as soon as I can. If you want to know when these videos drop, as soon as they drop, click on the notifications. On your phone, that's a little bell, and on your computer, it's that little gear. That way you'll know exactly when a video drops. Again, I appreciate the time you took to watch this video. Please share it with somebody that you care about, somebody that you don't, or someone that you just think might enjoy it. Much respect. That we're so used to being told what to do that we may think it's pointless to think for ourselves or even kind of crazy but it's not wait humble aren't you all about giving advice and now you're telling us not to take any of it should i just close this window that's a great question my handsome friend and the answer is no and no i'm not here to give advice i'm here to make things easier to understand my goal isn't to make you think like me my goal is just to make you think